So uh, you have two examples here of two great goals from this summer. Yeah. Uh, and well, how do we score them and why do we score them? Exactly. Well, it was difficult to choose because we've scored so many goals recently and we score them with style as well. All of the attacking players are involved. We um, open up space for each other, lots of passing um, to each other. It's just, yeah, it's a very nice attacking play. And so it was hard to choose exactly which ones to use. But I thought I wanted to have two where we start with very nice defence, coupling yeah. to last time, and have then created and opened up an opportunity for each other. And the Sundsvall match was a very good example of this, the home match against yeah. Sundsvall. And I've got two goals here. One is Alex's goal, and then we'll come on to Moyo's goal. But I'll Not say, surprised to see who scored the goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but I think it's, it's very important in this is that I th I, it's all the players were involved in this. So Nico was heavily involved with this, and also Aaron was was heavily involved with these goals as well in opening up space. So it's not just the players who have the assists and score the final goals that are important. It's opening up the space and it's all the players who are involved in that. So that's okay. what I'm going to emphasize today, how we've opened up space to create these types of okay. goal chances. And so we'll take Alex's goal first. Yep. And starting with the press here, you can actually see in this, in this example that Alex comes very quickly into press. When he sees that Nico goes there, he comes into press as well and then runs extremely fast carrying the ball up. And then it's him who scores this goal. He's, he yeah. scores it himself, so he, that, in, that, in that example he doesn't pass the ball. But what I, what I want to concentrate on by looking from the top-down view is how the rest of the team open up space for this opportunity. Yeah, well, we'll start, we'll start with the defensive point here. When Alex gets the ball back, you just nice. see these green spaces opening up. Yeah, and he's taking number 16 and pulls him away, so he leaves number five very alone. Exactly, and, and that's the whole idea here. It's often we give the credit to the players who get the assists, who yeah. score the goals, but it's often about opening up the space for the other players. And this is exactly what Aaron does here. He drags number 16 out because he has to mark him because he's got this large space in front of yeah, him so Alex can pass him. And so he can't go, he can't defend as well. Then when he realizes it's too late, he runs back into the middle. Um, number five is, is confused by Moyo and Nico coming in on, on that side. And that, as you pointed out, opens up the space between the two of them for the shot. Yeah. And in the next slide, you can also see that uh, the goalkeeper is actually moving up towards Aron, which leaves his... Where, where, mm. uh, where Alex eventually puts the ball as well. Yeah, so here we actually see the probability of success of various passes. There's a pass opportunity to Aaron, there's passes to Moyo and Nico. And as you say, the goalkeeper, well, he, I think he's thinking about this pass probability most of all. He's facing in this direction. Yeah. And that puts a lot of uncertainty in his mind. So when Alex decides to shoot instead, He's got him out of balance and he, he can score the goal. He finds that little slot to get the, get the ball into. He has very, uh, his mindset is it's, it's like he's, he knows that if I'm going to score, I'm going to go to this area because here's where you score from mm. and this is where I want to go. Yeah, so he's going as central as possible. As we talked about last time, it's seeing as much of the face of the goal as possible. Yeah. So he's r coming into that area and yeah, it, it, it's not that he's always going to score from that situation. It's, it's maybe a sort of the shot we would normally call as like a 7 to 10% chance, actually. Yeah. But he's, op he's produced one of the best possible situations for himself okay. and manages to score from there. All right. And we have the, the other goal from, from the match, uh, Moyo's goal. That's also... A yeah, so again, this is another type of defending. This isn't press defending. This is a more traditional organized defense. Yeah. But the effect is the same. And... Well, we'll look, we'll look at the goal first. It yeah. starts with a different type of defense. It doesn't start so much with the, the pressing. It starts with a more traditional type of defense. But it involves us staying very central in our defensive play. And you see he's staying there central, covering the central area. And I've said a few times in our talks that I like to think about the ball bouncing around at random. And it's a, head, a headed clearance. It can go pretty much anywhere in this area. But if we have as many players as possible covering this area, have Darian covering it, Moyo covering it, when it comes out, we have a better chance of getting it. And that is what happens. Um, 
by his positioning, Moyo manages to he manages to find himself in the in this position where he gets the ball back. Then this is very beautiful. But when he gets the ball, obviously you want to move it central, and you have Nico here who starts running yeah. straight away, and obviously number sixteen has to follow him, mm. and then Moyo can get the space. Exactly. So he can move forward and. Number eight has to go in on pressure, and then he can leave it to Alex. And well, yeah, I mean that—that's exactly what we're talking about. When it's still this, confused. this selfish uh, selflessness of of doing these runs. So Nico's first response is to open up this space for him, take a yeah. take a player with him. Aaron's taking a player on the other side. They're creating as much confusion as they can, opening up as much space in front of themselves as possible to receive the ball, yeah. which which makes it difficult to defend. Yeah, so I. I thought that it would be nice to, I, I, I thought it's, it's useful here to see again the past probabilities in these different situations. So here this is when Alex has the ball and there's this whole lovely green area here in front on of Nika. Both flanks. And on both. So again, Aaron, you maybe don't think about him so much in this, in this goal. You think about these three players, the ones that actually made the passes, but Aaron was just opening up the whole time creating uncertainty for number two there, creating uncertainty for number four, exactly. and dragging them away. And so it's all four players that, that create this, this goal. And from a Hammerby point of view, this is like a very beautiful picture because you want as much green as possible and you want close to goal. And, you want mm. and, and, and we often see that when we look at these pictures that we kind of surround the opposing team or in this sort of clump, desperately trying to work out where the ball's going to go while we play, them, play around them in these green areas. So. This this is very nice example here. Even even at this point, Alex has actually a sixty percent chance of playing the ball um, up to Moyo according to our model. And here you can argue this is a better goal scoring position, but this is a more certain pass. Yeah. And so we make the more certain pass, and once we've made that, this is when um, Nico has the ball. Once we've made that, then Alex is actually standing in a very nice, uh, good position where he can receive yeah. the ball. Um, Moyo can receive the ball right in front of goal and almost can't miss situation. And then Aaron is also there, has his own position um, in front of goal. And we worked out here that 65% of chance um, of scoring from here, 95% chance of the pass, sorry, 65% chance of the pass being successful to here, 95% there. It's kind of obvious to take the one right in front of goal. Uh, of course, you take that one, and yeah, because then it's just to put it in. If you get the ball there, then, then you have almost a hundred percent chance of scoring. <laughs> yeah, we never almost. say it. We never say a hundred percent, but uh, <laughs> we, we, it's a sort of yeah, it's getting up to eighty, ninety percent of, yeah. uh, of scoring from that type. Okay, and uh, we've seen two beautiful goals now, mm. but it doesn't always work out the way they, it should. And you have an example from earlier this season where it didn't work out. Uh, where the decision, decision making wasn't perfect and to see the development from there to where we are now uh, mm. what are we looking at here well this is, this is a match earlier and this is against Kalmar yeah the home and game. yeah the home game and that was a draw if yeah. i remember rightly yeah so wasn't a good result for earlier in the season and just at that point, maybe our decision making wasn't quite as sharp as it is now, and that's reflected in the number of goals we scored. We were yeah, still getting lots of lots of chances, and this was a example that Alex got a lot of feedback from the coaches about this particular um, situation. He tries to play the pass through to Moyo here, and you can see that Moyo wants the ball very early, so he demands the ball, but he gets it now, and you see that Vida is really frustrated at that point. He would have liked to have received the pass. Yeah, he's right to be, because he should have got that pass. And, that, and that's exactly the point. So he should have got that pass, and we can actually show uh, mathematically in the model that he should have got the pass. So we'll take this again. Because here he makes a decision, and here you have the perfect run in the box. Exactly. So here he's left-footed. The ball can come out there to, to Vida. He makes a decision instead that he's going to um, play through to Moyo, who's reasonably well covered and yeah. um, well actually very well covered and uh, yeah, can't get the ball. Th Afterwards Alex might have some explanation. You yes, see yeah. you see actually Moyo called for the ball very early. He said yeah. that he wanted the ball in front of him. He's got a strong personality Moyo and Alex listened, listened to him but he didn't manage to make the pass. We can take the top-down view 
And this picture, this it. picture here, we see exactly where he makes the pass, and he passes into what we have as a red area. Yeah. So that pass is not going to be successful. Maybe he could have made the pass to there, but the obvious pass to make, the green area, is right in front of in front of Vida. And this is then an example of. Uh, now it's Alex, but it goes mm. for a lot of players. But this is Alex's second competitive game, second Allsvenskan game mm. uh, of the season, where he was still very new to the team, mm. he was still maybe lacking a little bit in match uh, focus mm. because he hadn't, hadn't played regularly before. And now we look at him today, and you see a different player. Yeah, and so he's definitely developed. And I think what's happened is there's been a development of the chemistry between the players that yeah. they're. They know how each other are thinking. They know when a player is coming. I mean, you mentioned there that Vida should have shouted, you know, if you go into the arena. Yeah, it's quite loud the in there. <laughs> the whole as well, yeah, so and so as as much it as doesn't always to. work if you shout. But what they've done is they've got a feeling for who's going to come on which run, yeah. and they've got a better feeling for each other. I think there's the funny, from my personal perspective, there's a funny story for this because this is one of the first goals or first chances I analyzed when I started working on, on this. Oh. And I wanted to present this to Alex to give him feedback on this. And I talked a lot with Pablo about it. Yeah. And he wouldn't let me give, show it to Alex because they'd already been through this opportunity with him like oh, okay. <laughs> five times. <laughs> and he'd had so much stick about missing and making the wrong pass. It, we didn't need to show it. I don't rub it. <laughs> exactly, you don't want to rub in. But they, these types of diagrams are something that we use quite a lot to explain, well, whether you did the right thing or you did the wrong thing in certain situations and build up their understanding and help basically create that kind of chemistry yeah. which, we now, which we now have in our attacking play. Well, that's it for, for how we score goals yeah. in decision making. And uh, we look forward to the next, uh, next time we get our heads around the numbers of the game. Okay. Uh, until then. Mm -hmm.